we have discussed on this. Storage we talk about. Yes, so virtual machine also we have created, right? So we are going to talk about some best practices or some admin tasks you can manage into the virtual machine. So virtual machine is something where you are going to configure the availability, sizing and everything. So first of all, what is virtual machine? What you guys understand? Meaning of virtual machine? Virtual machine, ma'am. Yes, what is virtual machine? Like the physical machine, which is uh... Present in same as in cloud means physical machine means physical machine operating system. Okay, physical machine that we can on uh, like uh, mm, a virtual machine that is going to work like a physical machine. We can uh, onboard on cloud side. Okay, it is work like similar as a physical machine, but you do not need to purchase any physical device as we are in the cloud. So it's a virtual machine or a virtual environment where you can do and work. OK, as per uh, your requirement, you want to install some third party tool. You need some different operating system. You need to install some other servers software. You can install it and use it. OK, so. Now here you can see this is we already talked about what are the different type of services we have in the. Um, cloud services. What is the difference between IAS, PaaS, and SaaS that we discussed already? What is the difference between SaaS, IAS, and PaaS? In Cloud Fundamental, we discussed. IAS stands for infrastructure as a service. PaaS uh, stands for platform as a service. SaaS stands for uh, software as a service. Okay, and what are the differences? What are the differences in these three? Have you guys forgot the previous one? Like it is a fundamental thing that we have discussed. Ma'am, infrastructure as a service, uh, platform as a service, and uh, software as a service. No, ma'am. Hmm. What are the differences? Ma'am, uh, you have given one example. Like, uh, uh, if I want to do pizza, means uh, I have to do some uh, infrastructure part, like uh, cooking, toppings, and everything. Uh, I need to buy and I I need to do everything. Like uh, from like uh, compared to on-premises, we have uh, different stages, no ma'am. Uh, like network storage, uh, like uh, operating system middleware, and uh, data and applications. So coming to mm -hmm. platform as a service, uh, simply uh, we can uh, order and uh, means we can order in Swiggy or Zomato and we'll get it and we will eat. But uh, coming to um, platform as a service, we will go to restaurant and we will. Uh, Order the pizza. Like we will directly use that application, like in software as a in service. In uh, yes, ma'am. In platform as a service, you are going to use a platform or an application. Okay, to order platform. or to set the platform. We will use platform and we will. And in software as a service, you are going to their outlet to outlet. Okay, like you are going to the dominance. You are going to uh, pizza, and then from there you are going to order. Yes, ma'am. The same over here. You can see. The blue one is going to become as a completely take care by the customer. Light blue is going to become as a Microsoft is going to be shared. So on-prem means now you are going to take care each and everything at your end. It could be a physical data center, physical network, physical host, operating system, everything you are going to manage. But on top of that here, IAS where physical host network data center that is going to maintain by your Microsoft side. On top of that, you can choose what type of operating system you need. Like you want a Windows operating system, you need a Linux operating system. You want to set up a virtual network, you need to do virtual network pairing. You want to connect with some third party tool. You want to set up the application registration. You want to set up the users group under the Active Directory. OK, you are going to create the new users. You are going to register the Microsoft Authenticator app, your mobile and everything that you are going to manage. But yes, you do not need to manage any physical device, physical server, network, that doesn't know. That is going to take care by your Microsoft. Your cloud service provider. On top of that, you are going to configure only that is going to be depend that okay, you are uh, in which service. Okay, like you are with setting up the virtual machine, then what will be the operating system words and everything are going to depend. But in the platform as a service, if you see here, the complete platform are going to provide it from the Microsoft side. You do not need to worry about like okay, what will be the operating system, what will be the words and no. 
that is going to take care by the Microsoft side. On top of that, you can start consuming your services. Like I, uh, we have created a storage account, so you do not know that okay, in the back end, the storage, how they are working. Storage account is an example of a platform as a service. You have a complete platform ready. You want, you can set up your own network. Okay, that is also VNet, just you need to set up. You, you can set up your account configuration application. You can integrate with that and you can start using it. That is going to come as a platform as a story, uh, platform as a service. So a storage account is an example of a platform as a service. Then we have a software as a service. We are like Microsoft Teams. Here you do not need to set up anything. You're just going to log in from your device, mobile or phone or laptop, and then you can start using it. That is going to come as a software as a service. So example of IS is your in, um, virtual machine, your firewall, virtual network. Okay, these are example of your infrastructure as a service. Example of a platform as a service is your Azure SQL databases, Azure storage, okay, and this key vault. And what else services we have discussed? Your uh, these are the example like data factory, data factories. All are example of your uh, platform as a service. And the example of software as a service, your Gmail, my team, okay. Uh, these are all are example of software as a service. We are software is there. You just need to install and configure the access and start using it. So you can plan with your virtual machine that, that okay, what, what, in what reason you want to deploy your virtual machine? It is secure with the network, so it is going to be what are the different IP address range you want to define, okay, and in which location, what type of virtual machine size and everything. We have a, we need to choose the virtual machine operating system and virtual machine size is also right. It is a B1S series, right? We have seen. Windows virtual machine and the Linux one two uh, demo we have done. I guess Linux one I have given you as assignment. Windows we have created, right? Remember initially yes, on the sir. Azure first service we have created virtual machine and I created a Windows and then I given one task to create you for Linux. Uh, I guess anyone nobody has created the virtual machine at your end, right? In your AZ104 question, you will see most of the questions will be come in the virtual machine and the networking and the access part. So that's why here a uh, virtual machine is something that you are going to create in your lab part uh, over here. If you are going to start with the network, so here you can see what is the uh, virtual machine name, what is the virtual machine size, okay, in which location you want to deploy the virtual machine, and what will be the pricing you want to go like B1 series, D1 series, C1 series, okay, the different sizes we have. What are the different type of virtual machine you have? So if you find your portal. Okay, whenever you are going to create the virtual machine, you need to define that. Okay, what will be the name? What will be the resource group? Okay, what will be the reason and everything? And then what type of virtual machine? Like I want to go for the Windows. And inside that, now here you can see these are the different sizes you have available. Like you want to go for... Uh, see, high performance, okay. You want to go for the workload side, then you can go for the B series. Okay, you want to go for high memory for general purpose. Okay, so these sizes has been categorized that what is the requirement. You want to go for the cost and the data general purpose. You want to go for high memory. You want to go for the vector processing workload. As per that, it has been categorized in this different format. So first of all, you have a general purpose. Okay, that we have seen. General purpose means now, here you have a balance uh, uh, between the CPU and the memory ratio. Okay, the number of CPU has been allocated and the memory has been allocated. That is, okay, so that will be balanced over here between the CPU and the memory ratio over here. Then compute optimized. Then you have a high CPU compared to memory. Okay, so you have a high CPU to memory. Memory optimized. You have high memory compared to CPUs. Memory is like 14 GB, 20 GB, 12 GB, 18 GB. 100 GB, so that is the memory. And the CPU, how many virtual cores? Like you cannot associate any CPU, any hard disk or anything over here. So virtually we need to allocate all the computes over here. So how much CPU you want to allocate, like means how much virtual cores you want to allocate to give them more performance. Okay, four virtual core and anything like here, if you see. If I'm choosing E series, okay, it is giving you high memory need. So here you can see the memory is this one. Or um, D series, okay. So, see, it will give you a general purpose. 
where this is the virtual CPU is going to be allocated. This is the memory, okay, and this is the data disk size. And this is a maximum input output processing is going to be done and temporary storage is this. And if you scroll towards right, you will see the cost also. It is going to charge you approximately 11,179 rupees per month. This one is going to charge you 10,204.77 rupees per month. It is approximate cost. If you are not keeping a virtual machine is up and running, then also it is going to be less. Okay, so here it is just a lump sum amount as per the come like it is a general purpose. Okay, it is a C for more CPU performance. It is for a high memory to compare to CPU. You have ECD is basically for high memory. Okay, and also it is for general purpose. It is for high memory again ECDs. So these are the different examples that you have. Okay. So virtual machine size. So first a general purpose where you have a balanced CPU and memory. Compute optimized where you have high CPU compared to memory. Okay. Memory optimized where you have high memory compu compared to CPU side. Storage optimized where you have a high disk throughput. Okay, so what is disk we are referring over here? In the storage optimized. What type of uh, disk we are referring over here? In the storage optimized? High disk. Uh, so high disk is which one? Disk is what we are pointing out over here. Disk is what, what type of service? I am referring to the disk then I am pointing out to which one? Uh, virtual hard disk. Man. Yeah, virtual hard disk. That is your Azure disk storage, okay. right? Azure disk storage. Yes, we have one type of storage that is your Azure disk storage. So here, it will give you high disk throughput. Okay, that will be your Azure disk storage, which has the high capacity, like premium SSD, uh, standard HDD that we have discussed. So that will be your high disk storage. It will provide. Then you have a GPU that is graphical processing unit. As per that, it will give you more heavy graphic rendering for the video editing. Okay. GPU will basically design for doing the graphical or the visual editing. Okay, over here. So it is de dedicatedly designed for those kind of scenario. High performance compute, it is basically for fastest and most powerful CPU virtual machine. And the cost is also going to be vary as what type of virtual machine you are going to choose. Now here you can see what type of virtual machine you have in the storage. So each virtual machine has two or more disks you can associate. Uh, one is for operating system disk. Second, so disk I'm talking about your virtual disk that you are going to be allocate. Okay, virtual disk that we are referring as a Azure disk storage. You can see Azure blob it is pointing out. It means within the storage you are going to create Azure disk storage. So you have a first is operating system disk where your operating system is going to be stopped. So if you remember, I asked one question earlier that okay, if my virtual machine is in a stop mode, okay, so still it is going to charge you some cost or not? I asked this question to you earlier. If my virtual machine is in stop mode, so is this going to charge you some cost or not? No, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, it takes uh, some basic charges. Yeah, so currently if you see this is one virtual machine we have. So right now it's in a stop mode. Okay, it's a deal. Okay, so does this going to charge you some cost over here? No, no. Tyram, what do you think? Also virtual machine is charging you per hour wise, right? So if you stop the virtual machine right now, it's not running, right? So virtual machine is charging you per hour wise, not per day or per month. Yeah, so tell me if it's in the stock mode, is this going to charge you some amount, no amount? Sign up. Are you there? So uh, both of you like Nihal and Vishnu think it won't charge, right? Yes, ma'am. It won't charge for the virtual machine. Okay, but yes, there is some minimal cost for the this you can see. As I mentioned that okay, they is one uh, storage has been associated for maintaining your operating system, right? So there is a one disk has been associated always. No matter your virtual machine is in the stop mode or in running mode. It's associated over there. So there will be some minimal cost for this disk storage. Also, there is a temporary disk available that is going to be like uh, temporary data will be available once you restart your website. Like it's kind of cache memory you have. Okay, and data disk that where the data you want to store so you can associate the data disk memory optionally. Okay, so operating system is where the operating system is going to be allocated. 
okay like you want to go for windows linux so that is going to be installed or set up under the operating system next is temporary disk okay so here uh, it is just going to store some temporary data data disk here if it is completely optional that you want to go for uh, data disk storage for storing the data like f drive okay generally we have this uh, drives are available right in the laptop if you see you can see i have c drive and d drive right now it's my physical machine inside that i have c drive where my windows operating system has been installed this is d drive that is a temporary storage okay temporary storage can be stored over here and that can be lost but generally your whole data will be associated under this one you can see my C drive has been occupied more than half. But uh, now here you can see there is no data available because it's a temporary storage. C drive is this one. Also, I can say you can see general, generally in your computer there is a F disk, uh, F drive also. F drive means here you have added additional data disk in storage. Okay, so C drive where your uh, operating system has been installed, D drive where your Temporary data is going to be done and F drive where your um, data disk is going to be associated. OK, so these are the different type of uh, disk you have available that you can integrate with the storage account. OK, as your storage account, you can use your standard HDD, SSD and premium SSD and ultra SSD. These are the different type of disk storage you have available. So if you see if we stop the virtual machine, you can see. I shown you that also let's right? see while in Azure virtual machine is best of mode you will not be charged for virtual machine compute resources like whatever size series you cho choose for that you are not going to be charged like I'm choosing B1S series D1S series D D2E series I'm not going to be charged for that but however you are going to still need to pay for the operating system and the data storage disk allocated like OS disk we have allocated C drive or D drive two drive are there right data disk and uh, operating system so for, for that you need to pay some rare minimum cost although your virtual machine in the stopped and deallocated mode you can see right now we have in the deallocated and the stop mode but still you are going to pay some cost for this operating system disk history okay so we have a two type of disk available operating system disk and uh, temporary disk for that you are going to pay no matter your virtual machine is up or running or it's in stop mode you can see it's a premium ssd lrs OK, and here is the disk name and here your virtual machine has been set up the Windows operating system. Clear on this point. Any question on this area? No. All are good. Yes. Ma yes, ma'am. Now uh, have you guys set up your lab already? The, our sandbox environment. Sandbox environment you guys have set up. No, no, you guys yes, haven't set up yet. So you guys know how to use the sandbox environment now, right? So can you guys try to create a virtual machine from the portal and uh, see that you do are able to perform the lab? This lab we have already done RDP connectivity you need to do. OK, so we'll take a break for now. OK, and after the break, we will continue and we'll see how we can connect and authenticate to access your virtual machine. OK, with respect to different different use case. So it's nine. Yes, we have an OS disk that is a mandatory, right? And after yes, OS disk, you have a yes, uh, temporary disk that is D drive and then data disk that is optional that you want to associate or not, right? So these are the different type of storage has been associated with your virtual machine. And if my storage, my virtual machine is in the stop mode, am I going to receive any cost if my uh, sorry, if my virtual machine is in the stop mode, am I going to receive any cost? Yes, ma'am, for some basic uh, cost, ma'am. For yeah, uh, not for standard the, disk. Yeah, not for the virtual machine compute. You are going to pay for the disk that has been associated with your OS disk or the data disk that you have associated. For that, you are going to pay some minimum cost. Okay. 
no if you see we were talking about so now uh, like as your sandbox environment you can use for the lab if you don't have a credit card debit card please try to do the lab in your sandbox environment that is going to be helpful else if you are not doing the lab it will be difficult for you uh, to understand or to build the concept right so uh, try to create one virtual machine uh, windows virtual machine and see are you able to connect in there no okay sounds good i hope you guys understand requirement and tomorrow i'm going to ask you to share your screen and show me where you have created right every one of you need to create yes ma'am okay so try with the rdp uh, remote desktop and then you guys are able to connect also on that or not so now in this case here we are going to see the next that how you can configure it or how you can authenticate for the virtual machine side so if you see but first of all in the virtual machine how we have authenticated in the portal you are going to download the rdp right i i find it to connect how we can connect so first of all see we have deployed we have deployed this virtual machine and to connect for this one this virtual machine has been deployed first let me start this okay and once you start uh, it will take a moment and then you are going to move to this connect and you are going to download the rdp for connecting right so currently it's in stop mode so that's why this connection option is not coming up so till that time it's starting let's see over here so you are going through the portal so you are going to choose that okay hey, i want to connect uh, why this is a windows virtual machine this is a linux one so i am going to choose and i am going to deploy right so first of all i will go to the portal and then here also we have a tls available tls stand for tls is stand for transport layer security man and that is useful for encryption encryption and transit just now okay right so here you can see we are going to choose which one type of the uh, uh, windows or the linux you have then we, we are going to log in through the portal now here you can enable the tls and the, uh, you want to enable the azure bastion or not so azure bastion is like you are setting up the rdp over here right remote desktop you are going to take it from here similar way you want to you can use the azure bastion also over here you can see this is a bastion within the virtual machine you can set up the azure bastion to protect your virtual machine okay so here you are going to uh, set it up with the azure bastion also so azure bastion protect your virtual machine to providing lightweight browse based connectivity without the need of the expose them to the public ip address so if you are using the azure bastion to connectivity it is not going to expose your public ip address because see if i am going to connect with the rdp okay over here uh, let this uh, start then i will show you okay if this if i am going to use the rdp this public ip address is going to be visible that is going to come okay this is going to be visible but if you are going to connect with the azure bastion this public ip address will not be visible so that's why this is a secure method instead of rdp you can connect through this connectivity without the need of the expose them public ip address deploying will automatically create a bastion host on a subnet in your virtual machine network so this is my virtual machine name uh, will be there for bastion resource group and everything if i'm going to click on the deploy bastion now you can see it's successfully added to the subnet subnet is what is subnet a small parts of an uh, virtual network name so does all the virtual machine has the subnet yes ma'am yes right because here in the virtual machine we are going to configure the virtual network that is a mandatory and within the virtual network the mandatory thing is that okay you should have a network security group okay and you should have a subnet also available so here when we are going to deploy the bastion that is also going to be deployed or hosted on the same subnet okay like see this diagram now i am deploying earlier i don't have a bastion associated so you can see this bastion is also part of the same net virtual network and this uh, azure bastion is going to be hosted under the same subnet so in that case you can connect with the virtual machine so if you see okay it is also going to be hosted in the same bastion just uh, deploy Now you can see this is your Azure Bastion. This is the one which we are deploying. Now here you can see it belongs to same network, and it belongs to same uh, subnet. Okay, you can see the configuration. It has been associated with with which virtual machine, 
okay and you can simply deploy it over here and if you have connected or created any sessions that also you can see okay so you can see it's hosted on the same uh, virtual network where your virtual machine vm data valley has been hosted so it is also hosted in the same virtual network so it's a mandatory that your bashan and your virtual machine both should be hosted in the same network you can see for my virtual uh, bashan is hosted into this virtual network and here this virtual machine is also hosted in the same what is the network name if you see vm data valley this is a subnet okay so vm data valley is my virtual network and slash is the subnet default is the subnet so here also you can see this is also hosted in the same vm data valley okay and the subnet is so here azure bashan we are going to use to protect login secure login into the virtual machine where your public ip address will not be exposed okay if you know if i'm going to the connect okay now as my virtual machine has been started so that's why here you can see it is referring my public ip address and it is displaying directly okay it is displaying to all the developer or everything so you can see if i'm going to click on this download rdp and it is going to be downloaded so when i'm going to be login at that time also it is going to be show what is the public ip address but what if i don't want to expose or i don't want to display this public ip address okay you can see this is my remote desktop address is coming up 172 190 15 12 i don't want to display this that's why we want to go for azure bastion now here you can define the username password i'm not sure this is a correct but yeah let's see yes it's correct now you can see it is connected with the public ip address and here at every stage you can see the public ip address is going to be visible and this is my 172.190.15.12 so here we don't want to expose we, if we are going with the rdp it is going to be visible and people can simply access through the rdp also but now we want to set up the security that's why we don't want so in that case here you can see you can go for the azure bastion and you can integrate a secure login option so it is going to protect your virtual machine by providing lightweight browse based uh, connectivity okay so in the public one you are not going to be accessed as and currently it's in the provisioning state it's not deployed yet correct so if you see over here same thing we are trying to deploy so azure bastion is going to use the subnet but your yeah, subnet we could have a different different uh, partition or different different uh, groups of your virtual network but yes your bastion and the virtual machine will be in the same virtual network this virtual machine could be in the different subnet and your bastion could be in the different subnet okay so here you can see bastion subnet for rdp ssh through the portal over the ssl okay and remote desktop protocol for windows based virtual machine you can use okay so this is also going to be work like as rdp okay but here we are going to log in through the bastion we are not using the rdp so it is basically remote desktop protocol for windows based virtual machine and secure shell protocol for linux you can connect both the type of virtual machine it could be windows or it could be uh, linux so you can see as a user when you are going to be login okay as a user when you are going to be login with the tls transport layer security it is going to be azure portal you connected with the internet okay and again here you are going to do the authentication you pass your the credential like right now i pass a username and password so it is going to ask under the azure version what will be the username and password of your vm you are going to pass it through and then it will check what is the ip address do you have the required access what port you are connecting like for rdp we have a 3389 port and for ssh we have a 22 port right Remember, whenever we are creating a virtual machine, we need to whitelist the port. Yes, ma'am. And where yes. the ports are going to be whitelisted? In which uh, service the ports are going to be whitelisted, or you can add more port? Where it is going to be whitelisted? If I'm creating a virtual machine and I need to enable this port, where I'm going to enable this port? Inbound port, ma'am. Uh, so where you have to define the inbound port? Network security group. Yes, mm -hmm. under network security group, we will define. See, here under network security group, you have defined already that okay, the, which port need to be enabled. If it is RDP, then 3389 port, you can see this is my network security group. NSG is mentioned network security group. You can see in the inbound rule you have defined. So you can see 300. We have defined the port 3389 need to be enabled. If I am doing with the Linux virtual machine, I'll go for the secure shell connectivity. I will enable 22 port. This 3389 port we have whitelisted for the RDP. Similar way, if you are going for 
SSH, secure shell connectivity for the Linux virtual machine, you need to enable the 22 port. See, here these are the port range that you need to enable. Secure shell connectivity 22 port for RDP 3389 port, HTTPS 443 port, and HTTP 80 port. These ports need to be enabled. So here the same thing has been given in this example that okay here as per the port. Okay, if you are you are choosing to go for the RDP or for the Linux, these particular ports need to be enabled and then it will authenticate and then connect with your virtual machine. Okay, so your here, here you can see private IP address are going to be used, not public IP address. And as a login, you will choose this platform as your version. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We understand why we need Azure Bastion over the RDP, okay, and how it will provide the security. You can see there is no public IP address is going to be used. Virtual machine is going to connect through the private IP address, and as a user, you are going to log in into the Azure Bastion, not in the RDP, right? I shown you in the RDP connect. You can see like right now we are under this RDP, and you, this is my virtual machine name. This is the port. Oh, sorry, this is the public IP address. But here, if you am connecting with the Azure Bastion, then it is not going to take that. Okay, still it is uh, updating. It's in the provisioning state. Any question on this slide till that time? It might happen you have a multiple virtual machines available within the same virtual network and within the same subnet. But yes, you can integrate with the Azure version. Okay, if you have multiple virtual machine available, that also you can connect. Now this thing we have tried how you can connect the virtual machine with the help of RDP using the GUI. So you need to go to the connect, choose the RDP and then you can click on the connect. That's how we have connected just now, right? Yes, ma'am. Just now we have tried similar way. I provided the RDP. username and password. And here you are going to provide the for the Linux virtual machine. So this is a task for you. How you can connect with the Linux virtual machine that you need to see. So you need to create one Linux virtual machine machine similar way we have tried with the windows virtual machine you need to try with the linux virtual machine so linux virtual machine will give you secure shell connectivity it's more secure virtual it's more secure operating system compared to windows and here it more follow the command line interface you need to see this is the task that you have done uh, that you need to do and okay yeah so this is the task that you need to do you need to create one linux virtual machine for creating the Linux virtual machine, what you need to do is go to the virtual machine and click on create over here as a virtual machine. And under this, uh, choose instant of Windows, choose your uh, Linux or Ubuntu, okay, as a virtual machine and deploy it over there. Like I want to go for this. And then here you need to provide the keys and everything. Okay, so I'll share the link also so that you can. Apply. It will not go here. If you have any issue, then we will see in tomorrow session. Yeah, this is the method that how you can connect. OK, uh, but it is with the bash. Yeah, this is you can create and then after that how you can connect that also you can try. Pass it over here to you. OK, I am not member of the chat. Earlier I was able to share. Uh, so, so just search for this one. Okay, connect with this virtual machine. You will find this URL. Okay, and just try.
I quick start create a link, but I'm not able to paste it okay. in the chat. Okay, so just try with this one that how you can uh, connect. Sorry, how you can create first a Linux virtual machine, and once you create, how you can connect with that Linux virtual machine. Okay, once you are going to be tried and tested, then in that case here, you can see simply log in and check that okay, you are under the Linux virtual machine over here. Okay, that is clear. I should the link if you. These link also I'll share with you, uh, but I am not able to share the link. Uh, okay, let me reload this page just a minute. I will be rejoining.